Hey everyone, this video is for section 9.2, quadratic functions. Our goal is that we can graph quadratic functions of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. If you recall from the previous lesson, 9.1, we did not work with the, the value of b, and today we'll be specifically looking at that value and seeing how it affects the graph. So first sentence. In the quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the value of b affects the position of the axis of symmetry. That is really important. The value of b affects the position of the axis of symmetry. So exactly where is that axis? Well, it depends on what the b value is. So consider these graphs below. We have the first function, the b value is 2. And the next one, the b value is 4. And the next one, the b value is 6. So you can note that as that b value gets bigger, the axis of symmetry is getting farther away from the y-axis. Now, you may be wondering, what is that equation of the axis of symmetry? Because you really want to know. Well, here it is. x equals negative b over 2a. Say that out loud right now. x equals negative b over 2a. You will use that a bunch in this chapter, so you might as well just store it into your memory bank right now. Negative b over 2a. That is the way that you figure out what the axis of symmetry is based off of the b and a values given in your quadratic function. Here's the key concept. The graph of this function, a cannot be equal to zero, has the line x equals negative b over 2a as its axis of symmetry. The x-coordinate is that number. Now, you may be wondering, what is the c value that we just talked about, the b value? Well, the y-intercept of a quadratic function is that c value. Whatever number is in the c position is the y-intercept. AKA, remember, a y-intercept is the point that crosses the y-axis on that graph. So now, let's use the axis of symmetry and the y-intercept to help us graph a quadratic function. This process will become fun once you understand what is going on. What is the graph of the function y equals x squared minus 6x plus 4? The first thing that I always like to do, if there's no number in front, it's a 1, line up the general form of, or aka standard form, of a quadratic. That way we can easily identify the a is 1, the b is negative 6, and the c is 4. That is super helpful to begin with. Step 1, find the axis of symmetry and the coordinates of the vertex. Well, this is the thing I told you to store in your memory bank x equals negative b over 2a. Well, the b is negative 6, so negative, negative 6, interesting, over 2 times 1. Well, you see that double negative up top, that means we have a positive 6 over 2, and that equals 3. That means the axis of symmetry is y equals, sorry, x equals 3. Getting ahead of myself. x equals 3. That means the x-coordinate of the vertex is 3. So write your coordinate point. This is going to be the vertex. And we know that the x-value is 3. Always do that. When you find the axis of symmetry, take that number and put it in the x-spot of the coordinate, and then you're halfway done. Now to find the y-value, what do you think we're going to do with the x? Hopefully you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, I'm going to plug it in. Of course. So take that 3 and plug it in for the original function. So y equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 4. So I'm going back to the original function, plugging in the 3. And then we get 9 minus 18 plus 4. Negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5. So the y value is negative 5. Take that negative 5 and plug it in for the y value of the vertex, and we have a vertex. So now I'm just going to go to the graph and, oh, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself. I won't, I won't graph yet, so step 3. Find two other points on the graph. Find the y-intercept and one other point. Well, I mentioned this in the previous slide. The y-intercept is the c-value. 
So automatically, we know that the y-intercept is 4. Find another point on the same side of the vertex as the y-intercept. 0, 4. Okay, so let's plug in 1. 1 is always a handy number. It's nice and small and it's easy to plug in. Let x equal 1. So now let's figure out what the y value is. We're going to just plug that 1 in. 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 4 equals 1 minus 6 plus 4. Negative 5 plus 4 equals negative 1. y equals negative 1. So the coordinate would be 1 comma negative 1. So we have two points, and we also have the vertex. So now let's graph these points. So we're graphing all the points that I'm circling. 3, negative 5, 0, 4, and 1, negative 1. And we might as well graph the axis of symmetry so you know that we can basically flip the parabola over to get the other side without having to plug in more numbers. So there we have it. The left side of the parabola, it's not perfectly connected, but you get the idea. And now, to find out the other points, you're going to reflect. It's not letting me go. But, uh, okay, I'm just going to write it up here now. Reflect across axis of symmetry. That's how you find out the other side of the parabola on the graph. So we can go up to right here. This is two points away, so I'm going to go two the other way, and this is three points away, so I'm going to go three and connect. So there you have it. You graphed your first parabola that involves A, B, and C values. So you can give yourself a pat on the back. These problems take a while but they are worth the time. So now you're thinking to yourself, well, what's the application of this, right? Here you have it. Anybody interested in basketball? Or slingshots, t-shirts, anything like that? I think I'm getting a lot of you from those different concepts. So now let's read this together. During halftime of a basketball game, a slingshot launches t-shirts at the crowd. A t-shirt is launched with an initial upward velocity of 72 feet per second. The t-shirt is caught 35 feet above the court. How long will it take the t-shirt to reach its maximum height? What is its maximum height? What is the range of the function that models the height of the t-shirt over time? So first of all, we need to use a formula. Here's the formula that you want to write down in your blanks h equals negative 16 t squared plus 72 t plus 5. You may be wondering where are those numbers coming from. The negative 16 is just a number coefficient that is used often when there's a projectile motion. If you can recall the acorn problem from the previous lesson, we had a negative 16 in there as well. So now the 72 is coming from the initial upward velocity in the problem right here, and the 5 is coming from, well, the slingshot started at five feet above the ground. So that's where those numbers are coming from. Remember the H stands for height and feet and T stands for time and seconds. The first thing that's asking for is the maximum height. Well, the maximum height is going to be the Y coordinate of the vertex. So basically what's happening here is this motion. And we're wondering what is that height right there. That's what we're wondering. So feel free to write that down if you're, if that's helping you picture the example. So what we want to do is find the vertex, which will be the maximum point, and the coordinate of this vertex is going to be t comma h. We're used to x comma y, but it's the same exact idea, just using t and h this time. So we're going to be using the negative b over 2a. Instead of having x, we're going to be using t. Uh, hey, wait, we haven't talked about a, b, and c. We should probably do that. Let's label our a, b, and c 
above or below our given function. And now let's plug these in. So negative 72, taking the B. And now the A is negative 16, 2 times negative 16. And when you use a calculator, you find out that T is 2.25. So that means 2.25 seconds have taken place for the t-shirt to reach its maximum height. Now the question is, what is that maximum height? Well, remember, when you find the first value, just plug that value in for the original function. So this value is going to be plugged in for the t in the original function. So just showing you the red places, that's where it's going. h equals negative 16, 2.25 squared plus 72 times 2.25 plus 5. Okay. And you will definitely be grateful for your calculator in this situation. We find out that H is 86. So the t-shirt will reach its maximum height of 86 feet after 2.25 seconds. Now, they're asking what is the range of this function that models the height of the t-shirt. Well, we talked about this in the beginning. The t-shirt, look at the picture over here. The t-shirt is starting at 5 feet. So that means that is the lowest height that that t-shirt can reach because that's where it's starting. H is going to be the variable. It's not like letting me write an H. Um, H, that is an H right there. That works. Okay, H is right there. And then 86 is the maximum height. I don't know if it'll let me write this. No, it's not letting me write. Okay. 86 goes right there. So that is the height of the t-shirt during its flight. So there you have it. We have a real life application problem. We'll definitely be doing a few more of these together just to see the value of this concept. Um, now, make sure you do the lesson check for the previous section 9.1. And feel free to try today's lesson check. Graph these two quadratic parabolas, and other than that, we are good to go, and I'll see you soon.